Hello and welcome everyone. As always, it's great to have you with us tonight. I'm Adam Cellini. Topping our news, tropical storm Hermine has left our area. The damage minimal here on the Sun Coast, but as ABC 7's Kate Flexter tells us, those near Lido Beach are still seeing the effects. Here on Lido Beach, the shoreline is shrinking, so when tropical storm Hermine hit, it only intensified the problem. Carl Schofstall has walked Lido Beach nearly every morning for 14 years. It is the most beautiful place on the earth as far as I'm concerned. But over time, he's watched his slice of paradise slowly wash away as the shoreline continues to shrink. We need the sand. It's, it's at a critical mass. A situation only magnified in the wake of tropical storm Hermine. We can't take another one. We can't take another storm. And as the shoreline erodes, it adds urgency to a controversial debate, dredging Big Pass Shoal. The city of Sarasota, along with the Army Corps of Engineers, plans to use the sand between Lido Key and Siesta Key to build an 80-foot berm to protect Lido Beach. But in past interviews, Siesta Key residents told us they're concerned that the project would permanently impact Siesta Key beaches. They've even filed a lawsuit against the city and the Army Corps of Engineers. Without assurances, scientific assurances that everything will be fine, it seems foolhardy to continue down the path and take the sand from that shoal. But city engineer Alex Davis Shaw says dredging is necessary and increasingly urgent. We know that we're getting more storms, more severe storms at least, and so providing a way to protect our shoreline, both in our structures, our roadway, but also our habitats for the turtles and the birds, gets to be more and more important as these storms get to be more severe. Renourishment is also incredibly costly. In the past 10 years, millions were invested in maintaining Lido Beach. Davis Shaw says it's a cost paid back in tourist dollars. It's a necessary investment to keep Sarasota County on the list for, you know, a great destination to visit and to recreate. And so, you know, it pays for itself. For Schofstall, the investment is mostly sentimental, but it's also physical. As the shoreline washes away, he worries the draw of Lido Key might wash away with it. If they don't turn around and have this, it's going to impact their businesses. It is an economic nightmare if we don't get sand. The city plans to assess the damage from Hermine over the next few weeks and decide how to move forward. From Lido Beach, Kate Flexter, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. All right, thank you, Kate. Conditions on the Sun Coast are getting back to normal following the storm. Now just a few dozen homes without power. Out of 182,000 homes in Manatee County, 32 are still powerless. And in Sarasota County, power is out in only 17 homes. That's a big improvement from Thursday night when 9,000 homes between both counties were in the dark. A temporary shelter opened yesterday for flood victims in Manatee County is now closed. According to the emergency management, the shelter located at West Bradenton Baptist Church had to be cleared before church services on Sunday. The county and Red Cross had received more than 30 calls Friday from residents unable to stay in their homes due to flooding. The Red Cross helped those victims organize other shelter options like friends and neighbors, even handing out hotel vouchers to some. So far, the county has assessed 80 homes damaged by the storm. They encourage anyone with storm damage to call and report it to emergency management. While flooding was trouble for some, others on Anna Maria Island were making the most out of the flooding today. Check out this video Bailey Kogan sent us on Facebook. Looking good, Bailey. Uh, a white pickup truck is pulling two canoe riders. The water is still high as of this morning, so be cautious if you're a driver in that area. And now the Atlantic coast is feeling the impact of Hermine. It's weather now, but surging north and making a soggy mess of holiday plans for the beach and the backyard barbecue. ABC's Adrian Bankert has our report. Hermine has lost its hurricane force, but it's barging up the eastern seaboard as a powerful post-tropical cyclone that has triggered storm alerts from North Carolina to New England. Hermine's 60 mile per hour winds strong enough to shear metal from the side of this truck and to tear this tree from the earth. It was like an explosion in my backyard. I mean, this everything went up in the air and around. Making a holiday weekend washout for millions of would-be beach babies. Along the east coast, sandbags were as close as some got to the shore. 
They were handing them out in New Jersey as the surf kicked up, along with the wind. This beach was closed, but the boardwalk was packed as some tried to salvage one last blast of summer. Everyone's pretending that there isn't a tropical storm coming. Right. We're all, we're all in denial. We're all in denial. Hermina's left behind a trail of destruction, forcing hundreds of thousands to make do without electricity. Just cold water and a grill. So we can we make coffee, we've had hard boiled eggs. Residents of this flooded out mobile home park had to be rescued by boat. It's really frustrating, um, especially when you feel trapped and there's no power. I've had more than enough. Hermine is expected to get stronger as it sweeps north on Sunday. Expect storm surges of three to five feet at high tide and significant coastal flooding and beach erosion in some areas. Adrian Bankard, ABC News, New York. All right, thank you, Adrian. Now let's go over to Wendy Ross for a first check in our local weather. Wendy? And we have had the wake of Hermine that we've been dealing with throughout the afternoon hours and into the evening. And so what we have right now is that all of this moisture that was out here in the Gulf of Mexico streaming off towards the north northeast and not affecting us too badly. We did get a couple of showers that managed to make their way on shore throughout the night, but those showers quickly have dissipated. And you can see what I'm talking about right here. They didn't hold together all that well and right now just east of I-75 we're getting just some isolated showers and some heavier thunderstorms but they're going to be dissipating within the hours so we're going to be left with mostly fair skies for the overnight period and we'll let you know what we can expect for the rest of this holiday holiday weekend we've got the forecast coming up in just a few minutes Adam all right, thank you, Wendy. Florida Highway Patrol is investigating an afternoon crash in Sarasota County. FHP says a driver was heading southbound in the northbound lanes on I-75 near mile marker 177 in Northport. A 17-year-old driver had to steer off the roadway to avoid this wrong-way driver. The suspect is being described as an older male driving a light blue four-door sedan. Anyone with information is asked to contact Florida Highway Patrol. The Florida Department of Transportation says drivers should avoid Clark Road near Mayaka Park. A hole six feet in diameter has formed near the east side of Mayaka Park, west of Sidell Road. Another hole is reportedly forming in the eastbound lanes underneath the guardrail. Both directions of Clark Road are now closed in that area. For those planning a busy holiday weekend outdoors, experts advise you consider several precautions as the heat and crowds increase this Labor Day weekend. After days of what felt like nonstop rain, the sun is back in time for Labor Day weekend, and the results could be more visitors than usual to our area. I expect that as the weather goes out, it's usually very nice, um, so a lot of people will be out for the, the last weekend of the summer. For those planning to spend their days outside, Dr. Joe Pecoraro says to keep an eye on two things. Sunscreen and hydration because a lot of people who are either drinking or they get caught up in activities forget to drink their water. Pecoraro advises watching everything you ingest, especially those hot dogs and hamburgers off the grill, which after too long can harbor foodborne illnesses. Oftentimes people get so caught up in other people they let food sit out for hours, and especially here on the Sun Coast where it's warm and humid, that food can be a breeding ground for bacteria. Be sure to get the food, especially the meats, in the refrigerator as soon as possible after the eating is done. A popular road trip holiday, the National Safety Council is estimating nearly 400 car accident deaths nationally this weekend. As a result, AAA will once again offer its tow-to-go service. Any drivers who dial 855-2-TOW-TO-GO can be transported home free of charge. Still to come here on ABC 7, an inspirational race in Venice. Disabled athletes experience the thrill of completing their first triathlon. Stay with us. At ABC 7, our entire weathercast is dedicated to the Sun Coast, and now we bring it to you like never before with the all new official Sun Coast forecast. Beach and boating forecast. The winds will be out of the northwest at 10 knots. Now, with the most advanced graphics and technology, we bring you weather where you live pinpointing right down to your neighborhood. Zooming into the Sarasota Bayfront, the all-new official Suncoast forecast, only on ABC7, your Suncoast news. We're here for you. On your TV. On your computer. On your camera. On your smartphone. 
on your Apple Watch. And now you can get ABC7, your Suncoast News on Fire TV. Just go to mysuncoast.com and click on the mobile tab for a list of fast and free downloads that deliver ABC7, your Suncoast News on the go. Have you ever wondered what it's like to save a life? Find out by donating platelets at Suncoast Blood Bank. I'm Haley Wilgus, ABC7. Platelets aid in the clotting process and are vital in the treatment of cancer and surgical patients, trauma victims, and critically ill newborns. It's tough to keep enough on the shelves because they only last five days. To donate, call this number or visit scbb.org and you can help save a life. ABC7 congratulates Suncoast Blood Bank on 65 years of serving our community. Introducing the all-new MySuncoast.com. MySuncoast.com has been completely redesigned and includes even more great content and features, including Marketplace, the area's most complete group of listings for local businesses, an all-new entertainment section with the latest news, events, and happenings from around the Suncoast, and your photo submissions. A brand new experience on your desktop or mobile device. The all-new MySuncoast.com. Just another way, we're here for you. Back here on the Sun Coast, veterans and civilians gather at a new memorial to pay respect to those who gave their lives in the Vietnam War. The Southwest Florida Vietnam Memorial Wall officially opened this morning for viewing. Visitors drawn to the opening <clears throat> to honor the more than 58,000 men and women featured at the site. The memorial exhibits select the memorial exhibits select features replicated from the well-known memorial in Washington D.C., trying to bring a similar experience to Punta Gorda. It brings back a lot of memories to a lot of us, but it's all good memories because we know that these men are being honored for what they did for their country. I knew someone um, from my hometown that was killed in the war, and I came to find his name and I found it. I, I'm just proud to be here. Officials say the project began two and a half years ago, and besides a few finishing touches, work on the memorial is essentially completed. The Sarasota Sailing Squadron kicked off their 70th annual Labor Day regatta today, though the storm may have affected attendance on day one. The race attracts sailors from ages 8 to 80 each year and clubs from multiple states, including Canada. The regatta is also an informal graduation for the squadron's youth sailing summer program. Over 300 sailors and 160 boats took advantage of the clear weather in Sarasota Bay Saturday, but organizers say attendance was lower than expected as a result of Tropical Storm Hermine passing through earlier this week. It might affect the turnout a little bit. You know, normally we'd get a little bit more participation, but um, you know, not, 200 boats is nothing to turn your nose up. It's still a great turnout. We're wind. expecting more wind from the storm, but after storms, usually all the wind goes away. So this is kind of what I thought was probably going to happen after the big storm. The storm did not, however, affect any sailing or boats as the regatta continues through Sunday at the club's headquarters near Ken Thompson Park. The premier sports campus in Lakewood Ranch has upped its game. The new and improved athletic facility is finally ready for some serious competition. The 3,000 seat stadium opens after more than six months of renovations. The stadium features a new medical building, concession stands and Lakewood Ranch Information Center. The sports center hosted its inaugural match on Friday night. The USA 17U men's, soccer, men's national soccer team game was canceled today. Athletes with special abilities are celebrating their accomplishments today. The group Care to Try participating in a triathlon with them this morning. The teams put athletes with special needs and adaptive equipment racing to the finish line alongside those without disabilities. The triathlon hosted by the Venice YMCA took place at Sharkies on the Pier. Venice is always a good host city. I mean, they got a lot of volunteers coming out. You know, you got 250 racers, you got almost 100 volunteers. It's very family friendly, friendly and uh, it's always a personal challenge. The athletes did not take part in the swim portion of the triathlon because of unsafe water conditions. But still, you know, what a, what a thrilling day, I'm sure, Wendy. So this was a biathlon. 
it, it, it ended up being a biathlon. A biathlon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would not to take anything away from anyone, but yet yeah, technically biathlon. That's, that's what it was. But you know, it turned out to be a beautiful day today. I mean, it really was a nice day. There are still some very dangerous rip currents out there, so you have to be careful. You really didn't want to get into the water, but the beach was beautiful, mm -hmm. and we saw lots and lots of sunshine today. We ended up getting a few showers that came in through the nighttime hours, but most of those rains have not held together very well. There's one lone shower and thunderstorm that's taking place just east of I-75, and that is in Sarasota County, and it's moving off towards the east right now. And this was all rain that was out here in the Gulf of Mexico, and we had one band that came on through, and you can see it right here, and it's starting to dissipate right now. And all of this is moving off towards the east. And so here was that line. This is the shower that we're talking about. It's going to be around for about another 15 or 20 minutes as it continues to move off towards the east. And then once it's done, we are not looking for a whole lot in the way of rainfall for the overnight time period. Now what's going on right now is that we do have Hermine, which is located up here, just off the coastline, still bringing tremendous problems to the northeastern coast of the United States. And then we've got all of this moisture out here in the Gulf of Mexico. And some of those showers did come on shore, as I just showed you. But for the most part, that is all beginning to die down. You can see things are getting a little bit quieter here. We still have some rain over the northern part of the state. We have that one lone shower here in Sarasota County, but it is not going to be an overnight issue for us as far as the rain is concerned. So we've got post-tropical Hermine, and this is the system now that's moving towards the east-northeast at 13 miles per hour. You can see all the watches and warnings that are located here down the coastline, and this system is going to continue to move away from shore, but then it starts to come back towards the shoreline. They're going to have a mess on their hands all the rest of this weekend, so sadly for the people up in the northeast, they're not going to be able to enjoy going to the beaches or getting into the water or any of those kinds of things. Notice how the spin is bringing these showers back on shore, and so they should see rainfall that is going to be affecting them throughout the next couple of days. And as a result, those watches and warnings are going to stay in effect. Now, as far as we're concerned, we've got Hermine spinning up here just off of our coastline, but we're also keeping our eyes on the tropics because of this system here. This is just a broad area of low pressure right now, and it is a disturbance. It is very disorganized, but we're going to continue to watch it because it's got about a 30% chance of developing over the next five days. It's moving towards the west, and so we'll keep it Keep you posted on it. You don't have to worry about it this weekend. It's too far away to be a problem for us. Today, we did get up to a high of 90 degrees is it because we had the sun that came out for a little bit. And so now that it's past midnight, we don't have that recorded. But it's 81 degrees right now. Our humidity at 85%. Winds are coming in out of the northeast, and those winds have really died down. We're looking at temperatures everywhere in the state, mostly in the 70s and 80s. But we'll be warming up tomorrow. We can expect to see those highs back up around 90 degrees. Either side of 90 is what we'll be seeing for most of the forecast period, and we'll keep those rain chances at 40 to 50 percent over the next couple of days. Adam? All right, thank you very much, Wendy. Stay with us. Sports is next. What does it mean when New South Window says factory direct? It means we have a factory. It means we eliminate the middleman. It means you get an award-winning, energy-efficient window at factory direct prices. I'm consumer investigator Dale Cardwell. Replacing your windows will not just beautify your home, but save you big bucks on your energy bills. I've done the research. I've seen the factory. New South Window is my hands-down choice. New South Window. We manufacture. We install. We guarantee. Call now. Attention. This is an important message for anyone who has taken Xarelto or Pradaxa. If you or a loved one took the blood thinner medication Xarelto or Pradaxa and was then hospitalized for internal bleeding, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Xarelto and Pradaxa have been linked to serious, even fatal internal bleeding. If you suffered a stroke, heart attack, or serious internal bleeding, or if a loved one died after taking Xarelto or Pradaxa, call us now. Our network of attorneys have years of experience fighting the big pharmaceutical companies and is ready to fight for you. Potential claims are being reviewed for users of Xarelto or Pradaxa who have suffered severe bleeding or hemorrhaging, stroke, or even death. Our network of experienced attorneys is ready to fight for you. You won't pay a thing unless your case is settled. Call today for a free confidential consultation. 
don't fight this alone. Please call 800-928-6604. That is 800-928-6604. When you have credit card debt, the debt suckers, high rate and high pay, never leave you alone. Debt is really sucking the life out of them. He's picking up the phone. Oh, no, not consolidated credit. With one call, they can lower their credit card rates. And consolidate their bills into one low payment. They'll pay off their debt in no time. Call consolidated credit now. Because debt sucks. Call 800-201-0230. That's 800-201-0230. Call now. A message from the Pulaski Law Firm. You started there right out of high school, learned your trade and did it well. And the asbestos you handled, well, that was just part of the job. If you worked in the trades and were diagnosed with mesothelioma, get the best care available, then call us. You may be entitled to financial compensation without ever going to court. Call 800-236-4994. And see how we can help. Mesothelioma, don't fight it alone. Hurricane season is here, so when severe weather threatens, count on the official Sunco Storm Team at ABC7. We bring you storm warnings faster and with more detail than ever before. And track storms right down to your neighborhood. On air, online, and on your mobile device, turn to the official Sunco Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. Now, sports. The Rays looking to keep up the momentum after a game one win against the Blue Jays last night. The Rays shut out through the first five innings tonight, but in the sixth, Evan Longoria puts Tampa Bay on top with this two run single off Toronto starter Marco Estrada. And a few batters later, bases loaded for shortstop Matt Duffy, and he would clear them with a big double off the left field wall. Three runs will score, raise up five to one. Outfielder Kevin Kiermeyer would come up to the plate later on in the seventh and add a two run homer himself. That lead would prove to be big enough. The Rays would hang on to win this game 7-5. Blake Snell, the starter for the Rays tonight, improves to 5-7 on the season. And college football is back this weekend, and already we have our first major upset. The University of Houston shocks Oklahoma 33-23, a win over the number three ranked Sooners. Cougar quarterback Greg Ward Jr. and Heisman hopeful Baker Mayfield finish with nearly identical numbers, both throwing for over 300 yards and two touchdowns respectively. It's Houston's first win against a Big 12 team since 2009. And so far, a good start for college football teams here in Florida. The Miami Hurricanes are celebrating a huge win tonight against FAMU. The Canes beat the Rattlers 70-3 after scoring 42 points in the third quarter. And up in Gainesville, the Florida Gators taking on the University of Massachusetts Minutemen. UF takes this one 24-7. On Monday, the Florida State Seminoles will play their opener in Orlando against SEC opponent Ole Miss. That game is scheduled for 8 p.m. A former New York Giants football player is behind bars for driving under the influence in Florida. FHP arrested former Giants, former Giant Lawrence Taylor Friday night following a crash on the Florida Turnpike. Taylor was charged with driving under the influence after crashing into a motorhome and sideswiping a Florida Highway Patrol car. Taylor agreed to take three field sobriety tests. Authorities say he performed poorly on those tests. He had a blood alcohol content of .082, nearly five hours after the crash. More to come here on ABC7. Stay with us. It's time to upgrade your favorite news app. Now, ABC7's My Suncoast News app is better than ever with a dynamic brand new design that's faster and easier to use. Stay connected with new features that make it easy to submit photos, share stories on Facebook and Twitter, and save stories for reading at a later time. Download our free My Suncoast News app on your mobile device at your app store. ABC7's all new My Suncoast News app. Just another way we're here for you. Powered by the iAssociates, providing sight for life. 
Hurricane season is here, so when severe weather threatens, count on the official Sunco Storm Team at ABC7. We're armed with the most advanced weather technology. And focus on the Sun Coast. The official Sunco Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. So, you've decided to go to college. That's cool. So, pop quiz. Which is a better way to earn your degree? Commute to college and fill your gas tank, get stuck in traffic, drive in bad weather, try to find a parking space, walk a half mile to class, or learn online at Independence University. You don't go to college. College goes to you. That's Independence. That's Independence University. And all your supplies, including a brand new laptop and tablet, are included with tuition. Independence U for an independent you. 1-800-350-9872. Attention breast cancer survivors. If you experience permanent hair loss or baldness after chemotherapy, you may qualify for a cash award. Thousands of women suffering breast cancer were given a chemotherapy drug without being warned about the possibility of irreversible alopecia. If you or a loved one suffered permanent hair loss after chemotherapy, call 888-622-8732. Time to file a claim is limited. 888-622-8732. That's 888-622-8732. Stop. Living with hair loss, that is. Losing your hair is no fun, and no one wants to be bald, but there is hope. Getting my hair back was the best thing that ever happened to me. I'm happy with the way I look now. I'm very excited about my hair. I feel beautiful. I love my hair. Hair Club offers all proven hair loss solutions backed by our commitment to satisfaction guarantee. If you're not 100% satisfied with the solution you choose, Hair Club will apply the purchase price to another proven hair loss solution or transplant more hair at no charge. That was the best thing I've ever done. It looks good on me. Call in the next five minutes to get your free brochure at no obligation. It will tell you everything you need to know about your hair loss problem, and it's free if you call now. I am more pleased than what I had even imagined. I at least look, I would say, five years younger. I'm 52, and I look better now than I did when I was in my 40s. I feel great. And that's not all. The first 100 people who call will also receive $250 off any hair loss solution from Hair Club. Call now. This is important news for women diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Talcum powder may have caused your ovarian cancer. According to many studies, long-term use of talcum powder in products such as baby powder or shower to shower for feminine hygiene is linked directly to ovarian cancer. If you are an ovarian cancer victim or if a loved one died from ovarian cancer after using talcum powder, call the law offices of Davis and Crump at the number below right now to find out if you are eligible for a cash award and medical expenses. Call now. Day one of our Labor Day weekend in the books, and not bad considering a tropical storm mm -hmm. just passed the state. I, and, and you know what? It's going to be a memory, a distant memory by tomorrow because we've got all of the showers that have moved on through tonight, and we're looking at some very nice conditions for the start of the day tomorrow. As a matter of fact, we're going to be looking at temperatures that are going to be climbing back up into the 90s once again. We're going to be seeing very little in the way of rainfall all the way till 11 o'clock in the morning. Things are going to be absolutely beautiful. A great day to get to the beach. Hope it lasts. Thanks for joining us.